in, in the culture in which we live, it's so divisive right now. And right. so if, I, if, if, if one of us says the door there is brown, people are going to complain and up, be upset because they think it's burgundy. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, you can't say anything today uh, without people getting upset. Um, that being said, we're called to be salt and light in the culture. We're called to speak the truth of the Word of God um, into the culture, and we're supposed to live it. Um, now, how you do that and when you do that, um, we have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and be discerning, but um, there's an important role of the church. And if you look in, and especially the study of civilizations, the impact the church has had in shaping and guiding culture, it's, it's fascinating the way the Lord has used the church. Uh, we're in a time now, though, when the church speaks, uh, people get mad, uh, people protest, people riot. And so we've, we have to be very careful and discerning. But we need to be lifting Jesus up in the midst of all this and trying not to say things that get in the way of people hearing about Him, that He is Savior and Lord and loves them, and that uh, in spite of the sin that we all find ourselves in, that He has a, a way to forgive us uh, through His death and resurrection. Well, uh, again, if we look back um, to... The, the generations of Anglicans uh, look at the, 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 the Pietist movement, the, the Wesleyan movement in the, in the 18th century. Um, uh, Church of England parishes were all in the wrong places, not in the cities, not in the industrial places. And the Methodists went in and took care of the poor <laughs> and preached the gospel. And in the 19th century, the Anglo-Catholics the same thing in the Docklands and in the cities. You know, the, the Anglicanism has been great uh, at uh, um, dealing with, I mean, what, what you know, Matthew 25 says, I was hungry and you fed me. Uh, I was in prison, you visited me. Uh, I was naked, you clothed me. Uh, you know, again, that's, and those who do those things, according to that text, our Lord's own words, are, are the ones he knows. And those who don't do those things, he doesn't know. But if you look at particularly at, at uh, um, African history in the 20th century, you see that the great indigenous leaders were church leaders and frequently Anglicans, not least of which was Janini Luwum in, in Uganda. Um, uh, who, of course, uh, opposed um, Idi Amin. Uh, but this, this is over and over and over and over again. If look at the church present day in Egypt, where um, uh, the, the outgoing primate was a medical doctor, and Anglicans set up clinics and hospitals, and look at it, Anglican Relief and Development Fund. We can come full circle to what Anglicans <laughs> are all about, you know? Uh, we're, we're, we're about these things. I'd add that um, we were wrestling, some of us recently, with how do we identify the kind of justice a movement we, we need to be a part of? And, and the phrase was, uh, rather than other options, gospel justice. And I think that's a really helpful phrase. It says a couple of things. First of all, that the good news has uh, a concern for the individuals wherever they are. That's just part of the gospel. Uh, but it also implies a certain humility uh, that we are sinners trying to help. We, are not, we haven't got it all wired. We haven't figured it all out. We were sinners saved by grace. Um, and so uh, I, I hope we can bring humility to some of the justice issues that are racing through the culture right now, because that's not always been a mark of people on various sides of those issues. I think the church has to be in a different place to say, no, uh, we believe that we can do things that demonstrate the gospel now, uh, but we're also aware that the kingdom has not fully come. That there's that the, the, that ultimately, in, until Jesus returns, we're not going to see a perfect world and and perfect justice. We're always trying to do our best in those areas, but it's it, the kingdom that's coming will be the righteous and just kingdom, and that hope sustains us in the midst of all the uh, confusion and. Uh, competitions that are going on out there.